and Layla, welcome to Ray Lore Stories. So today we're going to be looking at the newer lore story for Madame Saris. She did have a lore story that I shared well, long, long, long time ago when it first came out. So since then, Raid has been adding some newer stories. And today we're gonna check out her new ones. So we're gonna read it together. From a young age, the girl who would become known as Madame Saris was drawn to the forbidden arts, not just shadow magic, but all of the dangerous magic forbidden by the rulers of Arabia. With an aptitude for the arcade which far outstripped that of her peers, Saris was considered to be one of Arabia's most gifted students of magic. But though her education rivaled that of even senior majors of Arath, it was not enough for the young sorceress. She wanted, needed, to know more. Saris hungered for prescribed knowledge in a way that many of her peers found unsettling, could find no one willing to teach her, and was a subject of much suspicion for it. She desired to feel the touch of power she could only dream about. It was in her dreams that the answer came. The dreamwalker visited Saris and whispered to her of sorcery such as she had never imagined. He also showed her how to contact those who might teach her that which she desired to know. She first learned shadow magic from the sorcerers among them, but even that satisfied her for only a short time. There was more to be learned, she was certain of it. Saris was forced to resort to more unpleasant methods, including necromancy to get what she wanted. She was caught plundering the burial vaults of one of Arabia's noblest families and banished. She joined other elvish exiles in Durham Forest, but had little interest in the new society that was being formed there, or in the conflict blooming in Arabia. She instead retreated to an isolated village to continue her studies uninterrupted. This she did for a number of years, and during this time learned how to extend her own life through the consummation of an alchemical concoction of her own device. Rising, brewed from the bones of the dead, blended with crushed chronograbs and droplets of her own blood. It turned her flesh green and her eyes amber. But once again, Saris's methods attracted the wrong sort of attention, and she was forced to flee yet deeper into the forest. There, she discovered an ancient ruin, a stone tower broken by time and overgrown with moss. Within, she found colonies of mourn bats. Saris found that her necromatic studies had given her an affinity for the blood-sucking creatures, and that she could communicate with them to some degree. Deciding it was an omen, Saris made her home in the ruin and made it over into a place fit for contemplation and study. Moreover, she layered a shroud of magical wards and spells of misdirection over the area, ensuring that it could only be found if she allowed it. No more would she be forced to depart in haste, halting her studies. The mourn bats became her eyes and ears in the forest, and nothing they observed escaped her notice. In the years since, Saris has rarely ventured to the more civilized regions of the forest, and then only became such dark lord lords have learned of her and requested her aid. Saris will only agree to these requests if her price is met. Her demands are largely innocuous. A certain book, a consignment of unique herbs, a few slaves. Other times it is something more enigmatic, the skull of a noted scholar, for instance, or a mystical artifact. In all cases, her clients know better than to ask why she wants such things. Some things are better left unknown. Okay, so here is the lore story from Madame Saris. Seems like some of it they kind of kept similar to the original, some of it not. Like her turning her, the color that she did turning green with her eyes, that was her own fault in the original as well too. You know, except in the original, she was kind of lusting after immortality and beauty that never went away. You know what I mean? And so that's how that ended up happening. Where in this one, it was that she was kind of just craving magic and the end of falling necromancy and such. Guys, drop some comments down below what you think for the Lore story from Madame Saris, and thanks so much for watching.